the goal is to make stuff that comes that leaves this and starts to actually do stuff. Right. And there are a lot of people who come in that are really interested in not just the process of making, but making stuff that they can do things with. And if making is a means to the end, I'm all in on making. If making is just sort of a pursuit, you know, it's an interesting hobby, but I had a lot of hobbies already. <laughs> yeah. Blair, tell me about this table here. This is this is something you guys are making here. Yeah, so we have a couple labs in the city of Detroit, but we're also partnering with some people to install fab labs at many different locations around the country. Right. And one of the things we've really moved to is having flexibility in fab labs, right? So fab labs are kind of a jack of all trades, master of none. Mm -hmm. So you can do almost anything in a fab lab, but if you want to get a production process going to do something, things are always out of place. And so we've moved into putting everything on carts that have sort of single plugs. I so see. if we're going to do a UAV project, we can line things up. So there's a logical workflow. So you can right, almost right, do a right. short, short run production line. So it kind of started with the, the need to have some flexible tables that you could move around mm -hmm. and that we wanted to be able to fabricate in the labs so that people could extend their own labs, et cetera, along the way. So, so a, a file so that people could take that file and make their own tables for whatever need they had. Would be one step. That took it a step farther in that they developed an app so that you can specify the configuration of the table you want. How deep you want it, how wide you want it, how much overhang you want it, the depth of material you're working with, the height that you want it, whether it's casters or not. Mm -hmm. You kind of select all of those and then it goes straight past the computer-aided design and the computer-aided manufacturing to actually output the DXF files for each of those parts that go into making the table you specified, which you can then go through and cut. So all of this notching and hole drilling and all of that stuff, this is, yep. I guess, one of your legs. Right. This is all figured out by the computer based on the, the choices that you make about Absolutely. what you want. This piece, this piece, and this piece. That's great. And all the other pieces, yep, are wow. all specified. And then it has links in the app for the bill of materials for each bolt and washer and nut that you might want. To no put in way. Yeah. So it tells which you exactly how much to go get at the hardware store. Which will store. link you directly to McMaster Car if you want to order it from there and <laughs> kind of go from there, right? Oh, that's so cool. Right. And then um, one of the other folks who's uh, working with me here, Jonathan Ward, is really um, a master at the app work. And he works with ShopBot some with that. Um, and that's also the appification, as they're starting to call it, of the process is going to be kind of involved with the house also. So being able to specify certain parameters. We already have an app that allows you to do those framing components. Right. So you kind of indicate whether it's a stud or a top plate and a bottom plate um, and the length of it. And then it'll go through and do the whole cut file based on the spacing for for everything along the way. So it's not just an app for making a table or a house. It's the prototype for an ecosystem for being right. able to use these tools to not have to do a granular every tab and slot is reinvented every single time someone makes something but you're getting the thing you're getting to the making of the thing as fast as possible right because there, there's a non-trivial learning curve to figure out how to use the general computer-aided design packages which i yeah. love yeah but you can do pretty much anything in it which means it takes some work to specify the specific thing that you want to do within it. There's and too then, many possibilities. Right. And then you have to do the toolpath generation or the computer-aided manufacturing part. And it, it takes some finesse to do that. Right. If right. what I want is a table, I want to deal with a specific environment to set up to allow me to specify the parameter of the table and take care of that. Or if I want a house or if I want a framing system or if I want a birdhouse, there's a birdhouse over there and right. you can select the type of bird and it sizes a house based upon the amount of room that the birds like to have. And it develops a cut pattern for that. So you can cut out a birdhouse for a wren versus a cardinal versus whatever. So, yeah, and that's the idea, to allow people to get into making things that they want to make as opposed to just getting engaged in the process of making. Right. I love the process of making. But even I am getting to the point where there's stuff that I just want to make. And even though I know how yeah, to do yeah, the process, yeah. you know, if I want to set up and, and crank some of these things, and I want to make a little change. I don't want to have to go back through the 16 steps it takes to propagate that through to the end. Right? It's funny because those of us who love making, we love the process of putting something complex in our heads and building it in here before we cut the parts. Absolutely. But not everyone necessarily does that, can do that, or wants to do that. And yet, by, make, by facilitating apps like this, you really are democratizing the access to the product of the makerspace. Yeah. And That's I, really cool. Yeah. You know, 
previously you had to go back to the person who did the design or be a mind reader to try to figure out what constraints they had embedded in these in order to change it. Right. Whereas now you're actually embedding that expertise in the app so anybody can access that parametric kind of design process at the point that they want to use it. And again, and, it's open source. Right. So this is for the any community that wants to grab this. Right. It's great. And for me, I mean, I, I'm seeing more and more that I have a split personality in this. I love doing the initial design. I hate doing it the third time and fourth time and fifth time. <laughs> and so, you know, if you can embed this in a way, and now, I, you know, we built 11 tables for a Fab Lab installation that we were doing last week. And having to go through that, you know, process yeah. and the tweaks, you know, yeah. for the three by five versus the three by three, whereas this is just kind of dial it in and do it. It's like, yeah. Yeah. finally, yeah. this is, this is in this phase of it, this is the way I want to handle it. Cause I switch into production mode, that making mode, right? You like prototyping. Yes. Yeah, no, I'm right. I, I also love getting my head into production mode, but it's a totally different headspace. Interesting thing that we're doing too is, so now if you want to go from the table and design a different type of table, you drop straight into JavaScript. Mm-hmm. We're doing a visual workflow piece right. based on some work they're doing at the Center Bits and Atoms called Mods Framework, which allows you to just have a data flow right, architecture yep. for mm -hmm. doing that. So you drop from that, then you can modify that, which then changes the user interface on the app. So somebody can actually modify the app without having to go straight down into libraries and JavaScript programming right. and compatibility between Firefox and Chrome and all right. that kind of stuff. Right. Right? At a certain point, you'll be able to make a sketch and take a picture of it and just put that into the workflow and say, uh, let's cut a piece out of the middle of each one of these to make it lighter. Yeah. So, yeah, have a lot of different ways to try to even, again, open it up more. So this makes it great for people who just want to do it, but there's some people who want to then tweak it and do it. So that will give them ability to actually modify the code without having to understand all of the gory details. Yeah. So. Yeah, all towards the effort, as you said, of democratizing access to be able to do useful stuff with this. To be able to get useful stuff out of the space, not necessarily to turn everyone into makers. It's, it's great. That's exactly as it should be. And then those who love to be makers can have such leverage by bringing thousands of things into existence as opposed to the three that you're doing. Well, this is where I get excited because I think about the that, that one of the things that makerspaces are in transition is right now they're all prototyping machines. But soon the quality will be enough that there will be manufacturing machines. And I feel like the collapse of an economy of scale is a net good thing for humanity. Right. That we don't have to produce a, a billion of these before one is reasonably affordable. Right. And as we look at, you know, the fab labs as a design center and a fabrication center, and they don't have to be locally coupled. Right. Right. So right. Right. somebody else can write an app. We can bring it here, do our thing. And, you know, we can pay them a micro royalty for what we're doing because we're doing all the customer support, buying the materials and the like. But if you have done something which allows us to make money, you know, whether it's open source or not, yeah. I'll send you back you know, something so you can continue to do good work right, that right. we can all benefit from and vice versa. So, yeah, the idea is we do have the capability to do useful stuff in this now. Yeah. And it shouldn't just be the stuff we think of here that we make here. Yeah, yeah. you got a thousand of these around the world, and so we can exchange the designs since okay. we have the same interface layer. And so. have much better iterations. Right. Do you know Danny Hillis? Yeah. Yeah, Danny is the one who said to me that he, what, he got pissed off at Mythbusters because all we ever had to do was the first prototype. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and he understands a lot of that process through connection machine and a lot of other stuff. What it means to transition from idea to right yeah. to production, right? Yeah. All right, let's uh, get back to the uh, shop. Get this to the shop pot. All right.